I hate spells. Y'all know this. But if there's a category of spells that could change my mind, surely it would be the dragon spells. They let you change a part of your anatomy into a gigantic dragon version of it. For a little bit, kind of. Not for very long, but still very cool. I'm sure today I will be converted. If you want to watch these runs live, follow us on Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon to support the channel and for exclusive videos. And make sure you like and subscribe. Otherwise, these videos are just going to drag on and on and on. Now let's get started with a build that should scale pretty well. We're starting off as Vegeta, the Sand Prince, and fly into Limgrave. Wait, what's the fly button in Elden Ring? L2 is the flyest button. It lets you do Ashes of War, aka good spells. Sell the rune to Kali, but forget to buy the crafting kit because I am a fool. Get the horse from Chi-Chi so we can actually get through the world at a reasonable pace and get the Stone Sword Key by chi Lai. We need it for later. Something we won't need, the Physic Flask. Yeah, mostly dealing physical damage this run. We'll talk about that a bit later. If this really is a Dragon Ball's Z run, we need to start training. Let's warp to the Dragon Barrow, do a touch of grave robbing to get the big fists, and somber stones on the way. Bulma wants to talk to us at the church, but sorry, honey, we don't have time to get in those trunks right now. We need to train. Get the foul foot. Is that the limb for which this area is a grave? And then we start pounding off with a bad dragon. It's important to focus about what we care about while we're training. Maybe Vegeta thinks about Bulma and taking care of his family, but let's be honest, when he's pounding off, he probably thinks about Goku. When he finishes, we have five dragon hearts we can use to wish for dragon powers. If loving dragons is Shen wrong, I don't want to be Shen right. We do need a seal with which to cast spells, so it's not quite time to start the fun. Get another stone sword key with some of the runes, then dip into Fort Faroth while we're in the area. I actually managed to escape the rats. I'm simply too fast. We could get to Caled and the Church of the Come Onion from Limgrave, but if you fall down through the Church of the Plague, you get a free sacred tier. Disregard. Um, Android 18, we're already running low on Dragon Ball women and hope you feel better though. Get the impassable Great Bridge of Grace for later and then buy our first round of dragon spells, which is pretty much all the spells we're using for 90% of this run. We got the SWAT, the ROT, the HOT, and the ICE. Time to visit the graves of my people, the cringe folk. We're home. Running in, we get poisoned, so as we run through, a couple arrows from the guy behind us kill me. Next attempt, we're still poisoned, but we make it to the Banished Knight. Currently, we're rocking plus zero boxing gloves with no armor, no stat investment in their damage, and against a ghost that can't bleed. As Vegeta would call it, a fair fight. Dude can't stop hitting the instant transmission button, and here I thought the transmission was to make everyone play Celeste. Beating this ghost to death gives us the Dragon Come Onion seal. <laughs> he did what in his onions? Learning a time, warp around, and hey, let's fight Smarag for for another dragon heart. Lord knows Vegeta wouldn't run away from a brawl. We actually get him with the Rot Swat combo. Dragons have like 10 different hitboxes, so Rot Breath stance breaks it down really fast. The cloud hits all of those hitboxes. Once it's dead, we grab the key, warp through to the school. Seems like a waste of time when you just pound off with dragons to get stronger. Then go to Raya Lucaria Crystal Cave and get some somber stones. Don't know why I grabbed the early ones that are guarded instead of later ones that aren't, but eh, who cares? Crystallion gives us nothing. We swat it anyway. It's like it beat me at Black Ops and I couldn't get over it. Still just focusing on getting stronger, we swat Boggart. Vegeta won't stand for sexism, even if the prawns are loaded with protein for solid gains. Give Princess Snake the necklace, then we go to Altus, so... Ladies and gentlemen, imagine dragons. In Fort High. The joke peaked. That's it. And the video now. It's over. All right, Raya warps us to Volcano Manor and we immediately catch hands from the hands. But then the hands catches hands, which are our dragon mouths shooting fire at the hands. And we have a somber four. The six and the five are in Volcano Manor and boom, we're at plus six. Pretty comfortable way to start the early game. But if you're playing the game a long time and you want to be comfortable, check out today's sponsor, FlexiSpot, and their amazing chair, the C7. My old chair was weak. Garbage. Get it out of here. Look at the distinct lack of lower back support. I'm just supposed to be raw dogging my lower back going into my 30s? No thanks. The C7 by FlexiSpot has everything you need a chair to have, including this little guy here for some back support. It teaches you to have better posture while also having a comfortable mesh back 
to keep your back from getting sweaty. Adjust the headrest to your height. I'm six foot two. I think I'll take mine a little tall. Doesn't matter I'm 240 pounds either. This chair supports up to 300. Lean all the way back if you're relaxing or lock it in place if you gotta be serious. Use the 4D armrests to enter a new dimension of gaming comfort. Tilt the seat if you wanna lean forward into the gaming energy. Raise it up to see your monitor or lower it down if you're like me and you're way too tall. The C7 by FlexiSpot is the perfect chair for long gaming marathons or just a long day at work at the office. I could rattle on about how much I love this chair for a long time, but the best way for you to know how comfortable it is is to try it yourself. Click the link in the description and enter offer code C730 at checkout for $30 off your C7 purchase. If you don't like it, there's a 30 day return window. And if you do like it, there's a 10 year warranty. I'm not even sure humanity will still be around in 10 years, but your chair, will be warrantied. If you need something with a little bit of a lighter budget, the C6 and C3 are fantastic products as well. They're also on the FlexiSpot website. So check out the C7 today. Click the link in the description and enter offer code C730 at checkout. Now let's get back to doing some of those dragon spells. All right, I wrote this script yesterday and I'm reading it now. It was like 1 a.m. when I wrote it. And what I wrote here is power up more Limgrave Tunnels time, rot and hot the troll to make it drop the roar medallion. What does that sentence mean? That finally works with the breath attacks, boosting the damage by 10%. For like the first year of the game, it didn't, but said it did, because this game's full of lies. Should call it Lies of E. Future Avatar will drop the Flame Shrouding tier after we make it nice and... Toasty! So we can boost our hot damage by 20%. Abandoned Cave, we've got a plus six seal, we've got extra boosts to fire, and the Clean Rots have 20% negative fire resistance. Surely one breath should kill the first one. Oh, nope. The breath attacks are painfully slow. There's almost no opportunity to cast them beyond the start of the fight. The claw is also painfully slow, but slightly less so. Bars. It does huge damage and also has huge stance damage. Like 30 stance damage per swat. What is that? Two charged heavies from a colossal sword? <laughs> hey, spell enjoyers. <sighs> Are you okay? Do you know what you're missing? You're out here telling me this is breaking enemy stance super fast. It is the stance pressure of a scimitar. Oh no. Marga gets hot and swat. No rot, why not? Well, I thought that the rot would take longer than the hot and the swat to pop pop on the illusion of Morgoth. Yep, yeah, that seems to be the move. These spells hit really hard when they hit and early game kind of rules because we have enough health to trade hits. Later, not the case. Suffering, but not yet. First, let's go to the high road cave and break the golem's ankles for the blue dancer charm. It boosts physical damage when you have low equip load. We have a weightless seal and we're not wearing anything else. So it's almost a full 20% damage boost on not just the SWAT, but surprisingly, the Rot. Rot Breath does standard damage, and this will make it hit harder than the Fire Breath, I guess depending on boss resistances, but yeah, that's weird. Nerd Juice gets swatted, so does Patches. Now we have the pickles we need to make some money. I thought maybe we could handle the Godskin Noble and Volcano Manor, just get the Rot out and you win, right? Well, no. You still have to hit a few SWATs, and he's fast enough to end our life in the dead frames of those SWATs, because there are so many dead frames. The breath attack is slow. He'll charge in and stab us, so we really can't repeat that later. We just kinda get boned here. But then I remember, Radon's free. Let's go kill Radon and get some free money. Bring in everyone. This really is the only way to make spells work. Get a distraction and spam from safety. Radon is so weak to rot. One breath is basically enough to kill him. I'll hit him a few more times for expediency though. Why not? Gostok opens up the door. We reward him with some swatting. God Godric time, just swat swat to phase two, then he gets a big dragon appendage. That's my thing. Hit him with the rot, and then... <laughs> Lots of people ask why I two-hand the seal when it doesn't do anything. Well, I simply had to do it to him. Activate that great rune. Now, maybe we can trade a little bit better with the Godskin Noble. Nope, this still sucks. We're really just waiting until we get lucky enough to rot him, and then keep him pinned behind the pillar. Our SWAT's shockwave is big enough to hit him behind it, until he gets through it anyway. Like I've said earlier, the rot is not enough to kill him, so there still has to be one more opening for the win. One more. There we go. We get the stone sword key from the shortcut, then open the fog door and get our somber seven. That means we have a plus nine seal, thanks to the other somber stones we picked up in Dragon Barrow earlier, and we're ready to kick some tail.
Let's drag ourselves into Raya Lucaria and fight the Red Wolf, but I forgot to get naked, so no blue dancer charm bonus. The Red Wolf has weirdly high resistances, so of course, I have to try and rot him. I live for a challenge. Maybe we just need some virtual dexterity. Let's climb a ladder. Oh, are they obliging? They're obliging. Let's, let's climb a ladder. Okay, fine. Not only will I destroy these little puppets, I will throw their corpses off the roofs they so lovingly protect. After that, we still just fall down wrong. This is the worst day of my life. The worst day of your life so far. Oh my god, come back. We get to fight a page with a freaking machine gun to get the Azure Staff. Hold it in your offhand, you get 40 virtual dexterity for casting. Only caveat, your sorceries are going to cost twice as much focus to cast. But that's only for sorceries, not for incantations. It's a little rule, but I have no problem reaching around that rule. Google Tulok, reach around on your work computer to find out more. Moongrim gets swatted, but that just means we wasted magic and get to go back to the grace if we want to fight Renala with everything we've got. It's a two face fight i definitely don't want to get almost done and have to reset because we ran out of magic thankfully you can save a little magic by just bonking the kids with the seal the damage of the claw is awesome against sad divorcees who can't stand up obviously that means the spell is a cast once she starts moving around it's harder to swat her not a lot harder she still basically just stands still occasionally floating away not all that bad hey i remember to get the crafting kit good for me loretta gets swatted at carry a manor it's nice and smooth this is still part of the game where spells are doing fine trading's no big deal ronnie stuff swat and rot the mimic tier then light the torches to fight the regal ancestor's spirit we really do great here swat hits hard and rot breath does well when we would rather have a bit of range it doesn't even get to teleport away we just kind of mash it knife for the ronnie give it to ronnie then run through the incel river main and just ignore everything we don't need glove warts or somber stones we should have grabbed the somber seven from here instead of the one behind the noble but yeah whatever like a rock time whoops definitely need more red flasks the dragon stuff requires a lot of blue juice to make happy so swap Estelle time and hey since we have another spell slot let's get the frostbite does that work on Estelle not really didn't know that okay let's swap to the rot that works great then we just kind of have to wait for him to die this is really going pretty great maybe I was too harsh on these spells maybe I was wrong about all spells maybe things are gonna keep going great oh, I love trash. this was a mistake this was wrong I shouldn't have started this. I don't want to finish this. I hate it here. The Valiant Gargoyles are just such a nightmare for spells in general. The dragon spells are the worst though. General issue with spells. Bosses will be inside you. They're faster than your spells. Your spells make you slow down or even stand still in some cases. Then you have to slurp your blue juice if you want to keep attacking, which means even more time you're vulnerable to attacks. Elder Ring bosses are just so much more aggressive than the bosses in Dark Souls. A little slower than Bloodborne, a lot slower than Sekiro, but much faster than Dark Souls 3. It makes sense from a gameplay perspective because this game is the most fun Souls game to play co-op in because all the bosses demand a trade of attention to handle their aggression. It's also why Spirit Ashes are here so the bosses can be that aggressive without making a single player run less fun. But that puts spells in a bad place since you can't dodge as quickly after you cast them and you can't move as fast while you're using them. You can disagree, but you're wrong. This isn't complaining about the game design. I love the game design. It's just designed for weapons co-op and spirit ashes. We haven't struggled this episode so far since we can just trade with the weaker bosses, but not anymore. Now, we're just kind of the dragon spells don't work on their own. You can maybe get the breath off, but every other move after that is going to get us swatted. Even the swat, which is depressingly our fastest move. Someone in the chat said glintstone breath destroys these two because it's ranged and could hit both of them. That was a lie. They move. Is everyone gaslighting me? Spells are bad because the bosses move. They move inside you before you can move. We're not playing Dark Souls 1 anymore. Oh my God. Specifically, they said I should be using the Glintstone Breath and I don't want to go get it. But also the Gargoyles have 10 standard defense and 20 magic defense. Let me crunch these numbers. 20 is more than 10. The defense against Rot Breath's damage type is half as good. If you want to say, well, with Glinstone Breath, you could use Terra Magica. Yeah, if you want to go get 20 intelligence on your already mixed Faith and Arcane build. Also, sorry, spell enjoyers. If you're always writing a paragraph about why spells are good, it's not good. If it's good, you need a sentence. Maybe you'd head to Conjunction Junction and use a function like and or also, like the Greatsword hits really hard. 
and you can infuse it with the best damage type for each fight. With spells, you're using but or if, as in Glintstone Breath is great. If you get Terra Magica, just quit out at the start of the boss fight to shut off the AI, then set your PC clock to 2 a.m. and your location to Albany, New York, then it will shred these bosses. Eventually things work, and this will be where I do my spell whining. Spoilers, only two of these are getting a cast. Maybe only one, haven't decided yet. Three champs at the same time, yeah, this is a living hell. You know what's more fun than a triple gank with the slowest spells in the game? Wiping a cat's ass. I'm worried she's got poop stuck to her butt and I'm worried it touched me. Hey Quinn, I'm gonna get the poop off of your butt now. I'm gonna give her a little privacy. Yeah, my cat's like 12 pounds, roughly eight of that is fur. Every now and then she gets a little dingleberry. This was the most fun I had in any of the following footage. Here's how we handle the gank. Line them up and cast the breath at the exact right time, then run around until they just die to rot. Fighting's not an option. We don't get to fight anymore. Just get the status effect and run. Royal capital, more like royal crapital. I'll be here all week. I'll be here whenever you want. These videos don't go anywhere. Ritual shield talisman should help us trade the first few hits against Godfrey. Mm, the claw makes you jump over stops and shockwaves. Did you know Godfrey's foot has a hitbox? Any Ash of War or a spell that makes you jump or crouch is a fun quirk when you dodge sometimes, but it's not reliable. The shade just kicks our ass so hard. Brutal. Until we win. Eventually, because we got lucky. Morgoth won't go better. He's faster. Every single boss fight moving forward will just be a wall we throw ourselves into until status effects break through. Maybe we should stop trying to get the blue dancer boost. Throw on some armor. Take less damage. We'd still get slapped around. We just wouldn't kill things as fast. Besides, any armor we'd get would have to fit on 10 endurance. Endurance just can't really be a priority. We need vigor, arcane, faith, and mind before we even think about heading to Enduranceville. It's best to just hit like a freight train and explode like a train made of glass. We die so much that even when we beat Morgoth, we still die. We just die at the same time. Poor Biden lands. Look, if you think spells help accessibility of the game, that's fine. Accessibility is cool. I just think there's a lot of better accessibility things we could do than a bunch of stuff that makes the game harder. For once, we don't ignore Alice. I want an extra dragon heart, so let's rot him up until we get hit by the big boy Roar. Didn't think it went that far. Round it up, get that extra heart. We actually have a few good boss fights in a row here. The Fire Giant has a giant pool of HP, which means Rot is a pretty great status effect. Percentile damage, gotta love it. Get the Rot, swat to the swap, and shoot, Rot goes away for phase two. But that just means we can reapply it. Put all of his hitboxes in the cone, and then get a nice stance break. Is there any reason we switched to Frostbite here? Nah, it doesn't really matter, but nothing else matters anyway. Rot was gonna do it, I just needed a bit more to round it out. Zoom through for Amazula, get killed by an Outrider Knight, because it just sees the rune arc we're holding and says, Give me that. But the gods can do are pretty easy. Each individual one has a small pool of HP, but the rot ticks away at the total health bar that they share. And it can hit both members of the duo at the same time, so you can double rot them. It turns the power of the gank against them. Our last somber stone comes from the bird run, and the draconic tree sentinel beats the shit out of us. I don't know why I decided to fight it. Really just put our rune arc on the line to die. Shoot. Malaketh is another fight that goes well, though I think if I died, a second fight wouldn't have gone that smooth. Basically, he doesn't run up to us right away the first time you fight him. He's doing a little monologue and you can get the free rot. That's enough to handle phase one until he goes to phase two and the rot resets. It just lets us apply it again, but it's a little more problematic. We kind of have to filter it out in little bursts until it pops, and then, yeah, we're done. Just run around until he's done. I've said it before, but Gideon is free unless he's very expensive. All of his spells are faster than ours. He never runs out of magic or stamina. So when are we supposed to do anything? After a few deaths, I figure out I just need him to do the stupid magic counter TikTok dance. That's long enough for our frost breath to hit. Those hits pop the counter so we can repeat. And hey, the frostbite chunks him off too. That's nice. Hey, remember how the Godfrey shade was too fast for us and killed us a lot? What if it hit harder and was faster? This is the bad place. He killed us so many times, we end up having to come back for a second stream. For some reason, our first attempt when we come back, everything just clicks. I activate the Ruinous Ghost Flame and run under the jump. A jump attack from us, then roll to avoid the spikes. We're able to bob and weave through every hit and get a stance break right after the earthquake. His frostbite resistance is really high, but we do get a proc right before the phase transition, which doesn't matter because it resets on the phase transition. Few charged attacks, we get a stance break for the win. Not only was that so much smoother than last stream it was hitless wait a 
minute. I just realized what was different. We're wearing armor, but it was hitless, so that doesn't even matter. Never mind. Radagon isn't quite hitless, but it is smooth. We have so much time to press circle when he attacks, and after the cone, we get a big old crit thanks to the crit boosting talisman. Critical hits are such a big part of why weapons are good. Once you get one, that's like 10% of the boss's health. Gone. Jump over the stop, slam, then get the frostbite mid hammer slammer, and we win. Here's the problem, though. The Elden Beast cheats. When it goes for the triple rings, we turn to see the invisible wall. That means we can't run away from the beast to show up where it does after the triple rings. We have to turn and run towards the beast, putting it on the other end of the arena. Then it does the big wave you don't get to dodge if you didn't start close enough. That's a one shot. Bummer. Next attempt against Radagon sloppy. That's my bad. I'm perfectly fine admitting when I hit the goofball button and play poorly, like when we die against the Elden Stars and the Flurry. Why was I so greedy? Or when I come back and get swatted by Radagon. That's also my bad. But on the winning run, I play out of my goddamn mind. Jump in and get a little R1 combo, then start dodging. Immediate cone, immediate charged attack. He stops to jump, but we jump, so he never gets to. Ruinous Flame gets the Frostbite crit. Woo, that looks meaty. It's not actually all that meaty, it's the crit and the Frostbite hitting at the same time. But then we smack him up during the Hammer Slammer. That is a hitless Radagon. Run into that space whale and start swinging. Reapply the ghost flame. I don't know why I feel like I have to remind you how ruinous ghost flame works. We've been using this weapon the entire time, but it's 110 magic damage with 80 frostbite on each hit. Obviously, I mentioned that earlier because we've been using this sword the whole time. Yeah, this one isn't particularly clean or flashy. The space whale honestly just kind of runs away for most of the time. And we have to chase it around. It can't be frostbitten, despite being kind of a tree. Hey, Miyazaki, can I tell you about this little thing called winter? It's a weather phenomenon we're going to lose in 20 years. But yeah, just chase it down, hit it when it does moves we can punish, and we win. Now we just have to do the cleanup, and this sword is going to make the cleanup pretty simple. First up, Placidious Axe. Turn on that ruinous ghost flame and hit the tail. It never fails. Stance Break is a go, and we have to reapply the ghost flame before we get any frostbite. Dude just has stupid high resistances, like 1300 or something. It's absurd. At that point, why not just make it immune? We die here, but this one's also not my fault. It starts doing fire breath. I see that sprint away. Doesn't matter. It hits us with two hitboxes. I don't know what I was supposed to do about that. I really don't change anything the second time, aside from going for more R1s instead of R2s, more hits with the sword, means faster frostbite buildup and more times for the bonus magic damage to hit. Overall, that might just be the move with most weapon buffs. I don't buff weapons a lot though, so I'm still kind of figuring that out. Weird that I didn't figure it out earlier in the run, you know? We still don't get the frostbite before the teleport phase. Holy shit. Reapply the ghost flame and wait for a moment to get one or two hits off. And there it is. Finally. The initial chunk is nice, but the lower damage resistance is where the real damage comes in. Don't reset your frostbite with fire. The damage debuff is the best part. He flies down one more time and starts up for the Omega Laser, but we pinned him into a wall, so we just win. I fought Rykard with the Serpent Hunter. Moving on! Study Hall, Hug via Fight Fortis Axe. It's two bosses in a row that are kind of bad to narrate. I don't know, what the hell is happening here? I think we're hitting a Dragon's Toes, but uh, yeah, eventually that red bar uh, goes gray and we win. Okay, Castle's Hole and Nile. It's a boss where you can see what's happening. Two sword attacks kill the guy with two swords. Then it takes three for the guy with the shield. Oh, whoa, whoa, big spender over here. After Nile does the phase transition, he wants to immediately go for his Omega attack. Foolish move. We get not only a crit, but a frostbite proc. Oh my God. Time to murder a few NPCs. First, the old man who can't move. It's a rough fight. Then in the consecrated snowfield, I was apparently a little too far to the north and we got invaded by Anastia. But wait, she brought help. There are Kaidens out here? What is this? Mass Effect's only satisfying MLM relationship? Finally, the Penguin Noble. It's not immune to frostbite. Apparently, Miyazaki doesn't know anything about penguins. Ranking the difficulty, I'd say Anastia Duo's number one, then the old man who can't move, and then the Penguin Noble. Get clowned on, clone. Moog goes uh, pretty bad, to be honest. Not as bad as like, oh, I don't know, the valiant gargoyles with spells, but pretty bad. It's just my greed. And honestly, I think I don't know how his stance works for the phase transition. Is it long enough? To get rid of all the built-up pressure, I feel like I distinctly remember getting stance breaks as soon as this ends, but I can't think of a specific time that happened. To be fair, I've played this game like a hundred times. We keep getting really close to finishing him before the cycle ends, but then I just get too greedy thinking I'm close to the stance break. Now here's how it was supposed to go. Big charged attack. 
he whiffs. We get more charged attacks on the counting. Did you know you can count the rings surrounding your player to know what number he's on? You can also just hear him say the number. Before phase two, we have four fully charged R2s from the Greatsword and get another one right as he starts phase two. I'm not letting him go more than two seconds without another hit, but it still takes three more charged attacks. Hit him with that ghost flame activation, then get a crit for the win. I don't really know what was different about that one. Only two bosses left, really one that everyone cares about. So let's yada, 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 the liturgical town, Halleck Tree, Swag Jump. Now we're here at Loretta. Despite being a very blue gal, Loretta's magic resistance is only 40. Ruinous Ghost Flame should do some solid damage. I'd probably make her Azorius, come to think of it, not Mono Blue. Bring back Horsemanship for her gimmick. Maybe when she hits the graveyard, you create a token of her that's a spirit with a finality counter. That could be fun. A couple times, she almost gets her goat, but we get her horse in the end. All right, so Melania. That's kind of a problem for every build. Sometimes we have a weapon that just cheeses her to death like last week with the Stormhawk. I think it's also worth pointing out how cracked the Stormhawk is. It gets 120 lightning boost on a faster weapon than this Greatsword does with a better damage type in Lightning Over Magic. Sure, there's no status effect paired with it, but that's just pretty cracked. Anyway, even with the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman for 20% more damage resistance, Ducky Dance is gonna kill us. Oof. Ghost Flame's pretty great here. Melania is weak to Frostbite, but if you don't have something that fully locks down her movement, she'll just spend 60% of the fight in in super armor of one form or another. One of the forms is the ducky dance. Not only does the super armor reduce the damage she takes and let her hit you, it also reduces the stance damage she takes, because why not? There's a mod on PC that let you see the stance build up, and apparently, yeah, her super armor just makes her good at the things she's supposed to be weak to. Uh, what kind of Gen 1 focus energy bullshit is this? It's just a war of attrition, where one side gets to heal every hit. Yikes. This time we get duckied again. I was trying to frostbite her out of it but now nah, we just die back at it again we get to phase two again but she decides to just never give you a window so uh this time they decided i didn't run far enough away from the onion now this one starts with a nice little combo into a stands break that's what we've been waiting for but she decides to counter after the dash stab before we attacked so she's not punishable you can't change the rules just because you don't like how i'm doing it she's just adding new shit cool okay i'm breaking out the fucking math for this one jump attack from the great sword 22 stance damage two light attacks that's 22 more for 44 charged heavy adds 33 that's 77 another charged heavy that's 110 millennia stance is supposed to break at 80 did the frostbite stop us from getting the stance break oh well ducky time i'm dead Time to stop floundering. Get in with some quick R1s. That's how you get the frost buildup. Ducky Dance Ring Around the Rosie doesn't work. That's a lie. But oh well, we be living. Ghost Flame has worn off, back up to reset it, then get a few R1s while she charges the uppercut and punish with a charged attack. Big Jump Attack gets us the crit, frostbite, and we are in phase two. Reset the Ghost Flame just so it's fresh while she's in the onion. Try to keep the pressure up, but fail because 60% of her attacks have super armor. She runs faster than us. Literally, when are you supposed to heal? It takes a full minute before we have a safe amount of distance to heal. Jesus, like I'm playing extra cautiously here. That's really how you win. And I think that's kind of bad. I'm really worried the DLC is just gonna try to out difficult Melania. And if they get more aggressive than this, while the player's speed is the same, that's gonna suck. One more crit, Frostbite, we win. We beat 35 bosses in six hours and 42 minutes with 59 deaths. Overall, I'd say that health and steeple is deceptively good. Most of those deaths came from the setup phase of the run. Once we actually start cooking with the ghost flame, shit rips. One of the best parts of this sword is the ability to dodge enemy attacks after you make attacks. If there were an option to, say, I don't know, have our frame data and double the damage, the damage wouldn't matter because you would be fucking dead. Let's put health and steeple on the A tier. Somewhere, I don't care. Put it somewhere, Corey. And also, I'm not doing caster pass again. Shit is tremendously unfun. Spell enjoyers, enjoy those spells. I feel like you're putting rubber cement on construction paper and calling it a dressed salad, but if you like it, good for you. Thanks again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. Remember, gamers, if you click the link in the description and enter offer code C730, at checkout, you'll get $30 off your C7 chair with the 30-day return window and 10-year warranty. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We find new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon to support the channel and check out exclusive videos and follow us on Twitch to hang out and stuff.